Hey what's up guys how's it going? In this video you will learn how to create this auto completion input form with MongoDB Atlas search. So today we are going to build this application. You can see that we have this input form and as I type on the input form you can see that it is giving me auto completion as I type. And this type of feature will be really useful if you are building some kind of application where some kind of search engine is needed. For example, if you are creating an e-commerce platform, you need some kind of search engine where user can search your products. In that type of situation, MongoDB Atlas search can really help you. So we are going to build that auto completion API. For the database, you might have guessed, we are going to use MongoDB because we are going to use MongoDB Atlas search. For the backend, we are going to use Node.js and for the frontend, we are going to use React and Chakra UI. Chakra UI is a UI framework for React. I have used it just to make the application look good. And I'm going to assume that you have basic knowledge of Node.js and MongoDB, especially MongoDB. If you don't know have the basics knowledge of Node.js and MongoDB, then you will not be able to understand, but you still can follow along. And for the client side, you don't need to know React or Chakra UI. Actually, it doesn't really matter what front-end tech stack that you use because the main topic of this video is to create that auto-completion API that we are going to build with Node.js and MongoDB. You can build the front-end with any framework or you can even use just HTML, CSS, doesn't matter. So we are going to focus more on the back-end about how to create that API. So how does this auto-completion really work? So here on our input form, we can type. So as I type, our client takes the input value and send it to our backend. Our backend then take the text and send it to MongoDB for querying the documents. MongoDB then send the necessary documents to the server. Then the server just send those documents to our client. And then we just render those data on our application. So that's the basic idea of our application. So if you are interested, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more of these React based videos. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me give you a quick introduction of mine. My name is Anjan. I'm a full stack web developer who can develop complex web application from UI to backend systems. You can watch my work by visiting my portfolio website datonjon.me then just go to projects and here you will see all of the projects that I have worked on. I'm looking for a new opportunity in a company where I can provide great value with my skills and knowledge. So if you are a recruiter or someone who wants a new team member who can solve problems, can develop real world application, feel free to contact me. You can reach out to me by email, LinkedIn or Twitter. All of the links are going to be in the description just for you. Alright, enough of my introduction, let's get straight into the tutorial. Alright, so I'm gonna create a new directory here. I will call it queues-search-yt and I'll cd into the folder and I will create another directory for storing our server-side code. So I will call it server so let's cd into server now let's initialize the package.json file with npm init dash y all right so now we have a package.json file so let's install the packages npm i we need to install express which is the node.js framework then we're going to install mongoose which is just an orm for mongodb then we will need course and .env for storing our environment variables. So let's install them. Um, we have an error. Oops, I have made a spelling mistake. The mongoose should be double O, not double S. Okay, so that looks good. So let's install them. All right, so our dependencies are installed. Now let's install a dev dependency called nodemon. So npm i dash dash save dash dev nodemon nodemon is a package that will automatically run our server when we will change our files so let's install it all right so the nodemon package is installed so let's open this directory on our text editor so first of all let's create a simple express server i'm going to create a new file index.js 
and I'm gonna require express here so const express require express and now let's create an express app const app express and now let's create a port variable port will be process dot env dot port if that's not available by the production server then it will be 8000 and now let's listen to the server app dot listen pass the port and let's pass a callback function we don't need parameters and it will just do a console log server is running at port and I will pass the port variable and now let's create a simple route app.get slash subscribe and it will take a function and this function gives us the request and the response object as parameters we don't need the request we just need the response so rest.send subscribe to kills coding and now we need to run the server but before that I will go to the package.json file and here we need to create some scripts I will delete this default script I will create a dev script which will run our dev server and I want to run the dev server with nodemon not just vanilla node so nodemon and I want to run the index.js file alright so that's it for the script and now on another terminal I'm gonna run the script npm run dev um, we have an error process is not defined I made a mistake process should not have 3s only 2s now it should work fine and now you can see server is running at port 8000 nodemon has restarted our server and if I just go to my browser and go to localhost 8000 slash subscribe we should have that text alright so we have this text subscribe to Q's coding please do so if you haven't yet so our express server is working fine now we need to set up MongoDB Atlas so just go to cloud.mongodb.com then it will take you to this page the link will be on the description and now you need to log in with your account please create one if you haven't any or you can also log in with Google after you have logged in you might be asked to create a new organization if you haven't any I have multiple organization created so I will go to this organization and I will create a new project I will call it kills-search-yt so let's click on next I don't want other members so let's create project and now let's click build a database and these are the pricing we will go for free so let's create now choose your cloud provider and the region doesn't matter here and you can change the cluster name if you want I will not bother about that so let's create cluster and now we need to create a database user I will give my name and a super secure password let's create user and now it will ask for an IP address for now I will add my current IP address but it will not work later I will fix that so let's click finish and close and now it is creating our cluster so we have to wait for few minutes alright so our cluster is created let's go to browse collections and you can add your own data but we're not gonna do that we're gonna use the sample data set so I will click on load a sample data set and it will give me around 350 megabyte of data so load sample and it will take few minutes to add this data into our database so we have to wait 
So let's finish setting up our database. So let's go to network access tab and we need to change the IP. So click on edit and we need to allow access from anywhere and let's confirm. And now again, go to the database and let's click on connect and choose the middle one, connect your application and make sure it is Node.js and the version is the latest one. And we will need this string to connect our application with the actual database. So we need to store that string inside our environment variable. So at the root of our project, just create a file .env. And let's open that up. And I'm going to create an environment variable, Mongo URI. And all of the letter would be uppercase. I mean, it doesn't has to be, but it's the common convention to use all letter uppercase and instead of spaces, use underscores and then just an equal sign and then your value. So I will copy this string and I will paste it here. Now we need to change few things. We need to change the password and this is not your MongoDB account password. This is the password for your database. So I'm going to put the database password. And don't worry, I will change the password after this video. And we need to change the my first database with your database name. And the database will come from the sample data set. So let's close this model and let's go to browse collections. And we have two database for now, sample mflix and sample training. Actually, MongoDB will add more data but we only need this sample mflix database name. So instead of my first database, we're going to put sample mflix. And this database will actually store all of the data about movies. For now, it has comments collection, but it will also add the movies collection. So let's refresh this. It should be done by now. Okay, so movies collection hasn't been added yet. So we have to wait for a few minutes. So let's go to the application and let's go to index.js and let's import .env const .env from .env and we need to add mongoose so require mongoose so first we need to call the config method from .env object. This will allow us to use those environment variables that we have created. And now we need to call the connect method from mongoose to connect our application with database. So mongoose.connect and we need to pass the environment variable. So process.env.mongo URI. And we need to pass a config object. I will just paste it here. And this connect method will return us a promise. So we need to resolve that with dot then method. And I'm just gonna do a console log connected with db. And I also need to change the catch method. And I'm just gonna get the error and I will print out the error. And this should connect our application with database. And you can see on the terminal connected with DB has been printed out. So we have successfully connected our application with the database. And on the database, now you can see that there are a bunch of databases are added. And in the sample Amflix database, we have the movies collection, the collection that we are going to work with. So to work with this movies collection, we need to first create our movie model. But before we create a model, what is really a model? A model is just a representation of a collection. And we need to create a model from a schema. A schema is just a representation of a single document. It will store what fields are going to be on the document and what data type will store those fields and so many other things. So let's first create a model. We need to first create the schema. So const schema 
from new mongoose dot schema and we need to pass an object we need the plot which will be a string with capital S it is the string object and we need title again string and finally we need the poster link again it will be a string now in a document of a movie collection you can see that there are bunch of fields here but we don't need all of them we only need the title the plot and the poster that's why we have added only three fields so now let's create the model so const model will be mongoose.model and we need to pass the schema not schema we need to pass the model name which I will call movie and then I'm gonna pass the schema so the model and the schema has been created and now we can create our search route so I'm gonna delete this dummy route from here so let's create the route app dot get and the route name will be search and we need to pass an asynchronous callback function and it will take request and the response parameter and I'm going to use the try catch block to handle any kind of error so if any kind of error happens we're gonna console log the error and I'll just return a response with an empty array so now let's really work on the search feature so go to the database and now we need to create a search index so let's click on this search indexes tab let's click on create search index and here are two ways you can create index with a visual editor or you can use a json editor you, you just have to put the configuration of an index but we are going to make things easy so i'm going to use the visual editor let's click on next now here it is asking us for an index name by default it is default we're not going to change that but if you change that you have to later specify that for more information just visit the documentation and we're going to use the sample mflix database and the collection will be movies so let's click on next and now you can just create your search index but we are going to refine our index so let's click on this button by default dynamic mapping is true now what is really an index an index is just a simple data that will be put on every document you will not be able to see that data though if you put dynamic mapping on then all of the field of a document will be indexed and we don't want that this will make your search index slow so it is a good idea to use indexes for specific fields not in every field of a document so we are going to turn off dynamic mapping now let's add a field and we need to add a field name which is title and again turn off dynamic mapping and let's add data type by default it will be string but we want autocomplete and we don't and you don't need to bother about them and now click on save changes and now let's create the index and it will take some time to create our index all right so you can see that our index is now active and we can work with that so let's go to our editor and first of all we will expect a query parameter from our request object which will be called title so I'm gonna destructure that from request object so const title from request dot query and we're going to use this title to query for documents in our database and to do that we're going to use aggregation pipeline of mongodb now what is aggregation aggregation pipeline is just a set of commands or operation that will be run on the mongodb database so we need to create an array so const agg short for aggregation and it will be an array actually an array of object and each object that you are going to pass in this array will be treated as a stage so at the first stage we want to query our data we need to use the search operator which will be an object 
and we need to pass an autocomplete object and here we need to specify the information first we need to pass the query property which will be title and also we need to specify the path where we want mongodb to look for the data which is title field not tile title then we need to add a fuzzy property actually a fuzzy object this will enable the fuzzy finding now if you turn on fuzzy finding then mongodb will still look for data even if you misspelled it for example if you want to look for the movie interstellar but you typed i am at first if you don't enable fuzzy finding it will give you inaccurate result but if you enable fuzzy finding it will still try to give you accurate data so we need to add a property max edits i'm gonna pass to you can learn about this on the documentation now after we are done with the first stage we need to add another stage and in this stage we need to limit the documents the mongodb might give you 10,000 document but we don't need all of them we only need five documents so we need to add a limit operator which will be equals to five and then we need to add another stage here we need to use projection with projection you can include or exclude any field of a document so use the project operator and we don't need the underscore id field so i'm gonna pass zero and we will need title field i'm gonna pass one because i want to include that then i want the poster and finally i want the plot So this is the aggregation pipeline array and we need to use this model to use the aggregation pipeline. Actually I'm gonna rename it to movie and now let's just use the aggregation. So movie dot aggregate and we need to pass the aggregation array and it will give us some response so we need to store that. So const response and also await because it's an asynchronous process and now I'm just gonna return the response so return rest.send not send json and I'm just gonna pass the response so we need to test the API so I'm gonna use a API testing client called insomnia so I will open that up and this is insomnia and we're going to send request to localhost 8000 slash search and we need to add a query parameter so we need to pass title and the value I'm gonna pass is just a and let's hit send and you can see we have results that mongodb found with just a character a if you just pass i n and let's hit send it is giving us some results now let's search for interstellar and you can see we have the data of the movie interstellar and now i'm gonna misspell this i will replace n with m so let's hit send and you can see that we have turned fuzzy finding that's why even if we have misspelled the title it is still giving us the accurate data so our search api is working and our backend is totally ready now we can work on the client side so i'm gonna kill the server and let's go one directory back and i'll create another directory i'll call it client and let's cd into client so I'm going to create a react app so yarn create react app on this directory all right so our react app is created and now we need to install some packages I'm just gonna copy the command from my blog so we are going to install the chakra UI icon package the chakra UI react package and we are also going to install emotion packages that is required for chakra UI axios for sending request to our api nano id will generate us some unique ids for react keys and also framer motion for chakra ui so let's install them 
All right, so our packages are installed. So let's open the app on our text editor. Let's set up a Chakra UI. So first go to the source, then index.js. We don't need the CSS, report web vitals, also not them. And we need to import Chakra provider from Chakra UI. So import from Chakra UI slash react and we need to import chakra provider not import import and we need to import chakra provider which is a component and we need to wrap the app component by the chakra provider component so chakra provider and let's put app inside chakra provider now the chakra provider component will allow us to use chakra ui theme so let's open up the app.js file and i will remove everything from here and let's create another component and i will replace these divs with fragments and i will import the text component so i will copy this line and I'll paste it here and I will import the text component from Chakra UI and let's use the text component hello world and now let's test our app if it works or not I will run the dev server with yarn start and you can see hello world has been printed out on our screen so our app is working and I will move this tab to my editor workspace so that we can see what we are doing okay so it's looking good so let's just remove this text component so I'm gonna delete this text component so let's first create the title so we need to import some components we will not need the text component here we will need the heading component and the box component so I will inside a box component inside the app the box component is simply just a wrapper nothing too special here and we're going to add a heading and the text will be kills search and now let's add some prop to the heading we want to align the text to the center so align center and we want the tag to be h1 so as h1 by default the heading components tag is h2 and we also want to change the font size so font size will be 5xl this value is actually coming from the theme and we also want some margin on the top 10 rem Alright, so in the box component, we want to add some style. We want to make sure that the box component takes the full height of the screen. So height will be 100 view height and max width will be 100 view width and max width, sorry, max height will be 100 view height and we will make overflow to hidden so that we don't get any kind of scrolling horizontally and vertically all right so that's it for the title and now we need to create this input component and then we will create the search result component so i will add the search component after the heading component search and let's write the import statement for that import search from dot slash components slash search so let's create the search component I'll create a components directory and let's create a file search dot js and let's create a component and we need to import some hooks from react so i'm going to import use state and use effect all 
and I also need to import some component from Chakra UI. I will copy this line and I'll paste it here. I don't need Chakra provider and also the heading, but I need the box component, then the flex component and the center component. I will import an icon from Chakra UI slash icons and obviously I have to add the add sign and I want to import the search icon so I'm gonna remove these tips and I will insert a box component and inside the box we need to use the flex component which is just a flex box container and inside the flex we need to add a input component and I will import another element from chakra which is chakra now it is called chakra factory and with that you can make any HTML element a chakra UI component so I want to insert a simple input element and I can make that input element a chakra UI component so that we can have all of the features of chakra UI and it is pretty simple to do just use the input element and at the start just add chakra dot and we have to close it and now let's add the search icon we need to use the center component now the center component just position its children at the center and we want to insert the search icon which is just a component and here you can see we have this icon but we don't see the input because we need to style them so let's style everything so let's first go to the box component I will add a SX prop with SX prop you can pass an style object so first I want rounded and the value will be LG and it will add some border radius then overflow hidden then background will be transparent and shadow will be LG oops I have to add a comma and the max width will be 600 pixels and the width will be 90 percent and margin to the top will be one rem and margin on the left and right side should be auto so MX for horizontal margin it will be auto alright so we have some box shadow now let's style the flex component we want to make it position relative and we want a line oops a line to stretch and now let's style the input um, we don't want autocomplete we don't want autocorrect also no spell check and the max length will be 64 and now let's add the SX prop we want the width to be 100% and height to 68 pixels and padding to the left also 68 pixels and font weight to oops to medium and outline will be zero and now we need to move this icon to the left side and we're gonna do that using position absolute on the center component so position will be absolute and left will be 7 and again height will be 68 pixels and now let's add some prop to the search icon I want the color of the icon to be teal so color will be teal and the shade will be 500 and I want box size to 20 pixels to increase the size of the icon and also I have forgot to add some placeholder 
placeholder will be search movies and now let's add the value prop it will be query text so let's create the state for that I've already imported the use state so use state state name will be query text and the value will be empty string and now let's create our on change handler so const handle change we want to get the event as parameter and we want to set the state to e dot target dot value and now let's go to the input and let's add the on change prop and it will be handle change so if I just console log the query text console.log query text and let's open up the dev tools and let's type something and you can see every time we type something the component gets rendered and we have the console log and the current query text is printed out on the console so every time we will add a new character we want to send a request to our api so let's create that so i'm gonna delete this and create a new state and this state will actually store the result from the api so search results and the value will be an empty array and we have already imported the use effect hook so use effect first we need to have a check if query text is false value that means it's an empty string we want to set the search result state so set search results and the value will be again empty array and we will return false and we don't need this return function and the dependency will be query text and now we need to send api request through axios so import axios from axios and we need to handle promises so i'm going to use async await and to handle async await we need an async function but we cannot make the callback function of use effect an async function we need to create a separate async function i'm going to create a if you function for that if you stand for immediately invoked function i will add two parentheses and first parentheses will be our function so async i'm going to use arrow function so first we need to get the URL and most probably the URL will come from the environment variable but I'm not gonna bother about them I'm just gonna paste the URL and the URL is localhost 8000 slash search and let's send a get request to axios axios.get just pass the URL and we need to pass a config object here we're gonna pass the params and the params will be title and the value will be query text and again it is an asynchronous process so let's store the response const now the response will have a data object and that is holding the actual response so I'm gonna destructure data from that response and again we have to await the process and now let's set the state set search results will be data and just for demonstration i'm going to console log the search results state and obviously we have to start the node server so on another terminal i'll go to my project and i will go to server and i will run the dev server yarn dev all right so our server is running so let's just type something 
enter and we have an error this is actually the course error and we have to handle that in our server file so let's open up the index.js file of our server so edit dot dot slash server index.js and we need to bring the course const course require course I need to use the course as a middleware app dot use course and now we should not have any error so let's refresh the page and let's search enter and you can see we have bunch of response printed out and every time I type a character it prints out another response alright so our data fetching logic is working with our input so I'm gonna remove this console log and now we need to create the search result component that will list all of our response so inside the components directory I will create another file I will call it search results .jsx. and also this file should be jsx not js so let's open that file and let's create a component and now let's import the search results in the search JS file. So import search results from dot slash search results. And we will add that at the bottom after the flex component. And we want to insert a box component and another box component. Then another box component. And now finally we're gonna add the search results component and this will take a prop search results will be search results let's style these boxes so first of all the outermost box will have a max height of 70 view height and padding will be zero overflow y will be auto then the inner box component will have padding on both sides so px will be 4 and then in the last box component we want to add a as prop we want the ul tag then border top width will be 1 pixels and padding top will be 2 and padding bottom will be 4 so now let's go to the search results and I need to import some components so import oops import from chakra UI react and I want to import the box component image component grid component text component and finally the vertical stack component I will also import nano ID from nano ID and I will just delete these tips and I will put a grid component actually uh, in the search component I don't need to pass this as prop I mistakenly did that sorry so inside the grid we are gonna loop over the search results prop so let's get that actually search results and we will loop over search results dot map we will get object as our first parameter so I'm gonna destructure that I will get the title plot and the poster because in the objects we only have these three property plot poster and title and we will return a component we will return box component we will add the key and the value will be nano id and inside the box we have to add another grid component and inside the grid we have to add a box property to wrap the image component and let's add the image component 
we have to add the source which will be poster oops poster then we have to pass the sx prop width will be 100 percent and also height will be 100 percent then object fit will be cover then after the box component we need to add a vertical stack now the vertical stack component is just a flexbox element that will stack its children on top of another so v stack by default it moves its children to the center but we want to align it to start and we will add a text component which will be the title and we don't see anything not the title not even the image because we haven't typed anything so let's type again enter close the dev tools you can see we have the image and also we have the title and it is looking terrible so we will fix that in a minute now the title can be big it can take more than one line but we want to prevent that we can do that very easily with no offline prop so no of lines and the value will be one so this prop will make sure that the text will always stays at one line it will not go more than one line and you can pass different values if you want and i will copy this component and instead of title i will pass the plot and now we have a plot and you can see that at the end we have three dots that means there are more text available but just because we have passed the no offline prop it will not go more than one line okay so that's it for the actual markup so let's style them first just go to the grid component which is the inner one let's add the sx prop now obviously the grid component element is actually a grid element so we need to divide the grid into two columns so grid template columns will be 50 pixels and one fr then grid column gap will be one rem then height will be 70 pixels and overflow will be hidden and finally let's go to the outermost grid component here we just need to add a grid row gap so grid row gap will be one rem and let's just type avengers and as you can see as i type it gives me auto completion and the final thing that i want to add in the styles is a hover effect so in the box component i will add a underscore hover prop for hover effect which will be an object i want to change the background on hover teal and i want the shade to 500 then color will be white and cursor will be pointer and I also want to add some padding so padding will be 0.5 rem for top and bottom and 1 rem for left and right so let's hover over them and you can see we have a nice hover effect and we need to do one last thing of our application I will delete everything and you can see we have this extra part of our input we don't need them so so we are going to mount these components only if the query text is not an empty string so if query text is true then we are going to mount these components okay so we don't have the extra part and again i will search for something interstellar and you can see it gives me the correct result 
So that's it for our application. We have successfully built a Mernstack application. It was a simple app. I've shown you how to create a simple auto completion form with MongoDB, but you can create much more complex than that. You can add much more conditions to your search index, but I'm not going to go over them. That will be too complex. So if the video has been helpful for you, at least you have learned something new from this video. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more of these react based videos. If you have any question, please comment down below. If you want to suggest me any kind of topic that I should create a video on, also please drop them on the comment section. I would love to hear from you. And also if you want to get more daily tips and tricks about full stack web development, you can follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter as that Anjan. and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.